Hope everybody had a good holiday. We are uh, getting ready for the session next week and uh, organizing the House and uh, making some decisions on committee positions, and we'll be announcing those next week. Uh, but um, I thought it'd be appropriate if y'all, anybody had a question or two for us to get together and visit this morning. So uh, thank you for being here. Well, actually, I'm going home to Blue Ridge Friday afternoon. I hope I get snowed in. <laughs> um, we're, we're, we're required to be here Monday. Uh, I will be here. Um, uh, many of you remember, I think it was the 11 session uh, when uh, uh, some of us had to have assistance in getting here, and um, but the Constitution says that we have to meet on Monday, the second Monday in January, and we're going to be here and start. I, I don't know about Wild Hog. I'll, I'll stop by and visit down there for a few minutes. Uh, I know a lot of people from around the state enjoy uh, coming for that, and hope. I, I think the weather, uh, um, according to my weather reporter. Uh, I'm looking at Claire. Uh, <laughs> uh, she's not my weather reporter. Uh, but it looks like the any issues would be Saturday and probably not on Sunday. So hopefully that will be the case. With education reform likely being a top priority mm -hmm. again, what will you say to Georgians who are frustrated with it being recycled over again? Well, um, what I'm going to say is that Putting aside all the rhetoric and the debate over the uh, constitutional amendment uh, that we just came through, the fact remains that we still have almost 70,000 children in failing schools in Georgia. Uh, and so what we do about that uh, is, is going to be important to me. It's going to be important to the House. We're looking at some measures now. <coughs> um, uh, Representative Kevin Tanner and others have been working uh, uh, for uh, actually for a few months on coming up with something that uh, uh, I think will uh, address that issue. Um, I'm not sure what the governor is going to come with on his agenda. We'll uh, certainly uh, uh, consider that uh, when he brings that forward. Uh, but uh, I think Georgians do expect us to make education a priority because it's one of the most important things that we deal with, and we're going to be dealing with it in the budget. Um, you know, uh, we, we hear a lot of uh, talk that um, uh, we're shortchanging our school systems, but, you know, we, we've, we, we are not far removed from a very severe economic downturn in Georgia. Uh, fortunately, you know, it, things are looking better, much better. Uh, but it takes time to get back to where we were, and but we're getting there. Broad strokes, what does that mean? I'm sorry? Kind of broad strokes, what does that package Well, I haven't seen the bill yet. Uh, uh, he and I have had conversations, and I think that it will be a, um, uh, a, a plan to address those schools that are failing in more of an incremental way. Uh, and we'll we'll have more to say about that next week. I think when he gets his bill prepared. Can you talk a little bit about the medical cannabis and uh, Representative Peake's uh, proposal for a constitutional amendment on uh, medical cannabis? I've supported uh, Representative Peake's efforts uh, through uh, uh, Haley's uh, Hope Act uh, a couple of three years ago, and and his efforts to uh, um, provide an infrastructure. Uh, to make sure that Georgians who qualify have access uh, to that. Um, I, I know that he is coming with a, um, another bill this session, and I, I hope that I'll be able to support that. I think that what I think is important is that we be able to fulfill the promise that was contained in the uh, original legislation uh, of providing access to, uh, to Georgians. I don't know. I'm going to. Uh, uh, I, I trust Representative Peake uh, to uh, uh, 
in, in his in his judgment, uh, that's the best way to go. Uh, and uh, no one has worked harder <clears throat> um, and in a more comprehensive way uh, than he has on that issue. So uh, if that's the route that he uh, believes is best, then, then I'll be supportive of that. The constitutional amendment, Senator Brandon Beach is going to be coming forward with a constitutional amendment on casino gambling and horse racing, combining them for the first time under one proposal, uh, mm -hmm. along with, with the enabling legislation to go with it this time. Um, in the past, I think you said we need to figure out first if that's something we want to do before we talk about what it looks like. But, uh, any new thoughts on it? I don't have any new thoughts. Uh, my thought has been uh, that that it's a complex issue. Uh, the, the first issue is uh, we have to decide if we're going to expand gambling. Uh, second issue is, is what model uh, does it take? Uh, do you have one, two, five, ten licenses? Um, what the regulatory uh, framework would, would look like, um, uh, <clears throat> and then what do you do with the money? Um, you know, I'm, I'm getting all kinds of suggestions on that uh, from Hope Scholarship. I know there's some discussion about a needs-based scholarship, and I've even heard floated that uh, uh, we ought to use some of the proceeds for um, – um, uh, dr uh, substance abuse uh, problems. Uh, so I think that uh, I think we've got a lot of decisions that we have to make. Uh, I'm not sure that we'll uh, be able to make them all this session, uh, um, and 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 I'm still not sure that uh, uh, that casinos uh, in Georgia uh, uh, are consistent with where we want to be as a state. Mr. Yes, Brian. Uh, Three bills last last year that were passed and sent to the governor's desk. Uh, I'll just call them the religious liberty bill, campus carry, and the firemen, cancer mm -hmm. workmen's comp. Those are the three. The governor vetoed those. Is there discussion of bringing those back to the floor? Uh, different language that the governor will accept. Those three particular bills. What do you see in store for them this session? Well, let me take those sort of in reverse order. Um, um, I can tell you that that. Uh, I am I am committed to passing a firefighter protection bill. Um, th this is an issue that uh, that frankly uh, um, I've got a personal stake in because I know people that have been in that situation. Um, one of my heroes is a fire fireman in Gilmer County, uh, and when I heard his story about having to rush back to work after taking chemo treatments uh, because he had to provide for his family. Uh, it, 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 it frankly uh, touched my heart. Um, uh, we lost fireman Frank Martinez a couple of weeks ago. <clears throat> um, uh, same situation. Uh, I think a state that's number one in the nation in which to do business ought to take care of its public safety employees. Uh, and um, so we're, we're going to pass another bill. Uh, I don't know what tweaks we may make in the one that we did last session, but uh, but we're going to pass another bill. Um, the uh, Second Amendment issue I think you'll uh, hear from this session. Uh, um, I think, uh, you know, under, under our form of government, uh, the, the Constitution allows states to um, expand upon constitutional rights and uh, so I think it's important that we do all that we can uh, to reasonably expand our protections under the Second Amendment. Uh, uh, it's not just a campus carry issue, uh, it's a protection of the Second Amendment issue as far as I'm concerned. Uh, so I, 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 I support that. Uh, you know, uh, on the other one, um, We've, we've dealt with that for three years, um, you know, and, and, and I've, I've, I've sort of taken the hits on a couple of those years, uh, uh, and I'm willing to take the hits again this year. Uh, you know, I, uh, and, and I, I don't know that an issue that so divides Georgia uh, as that one does uh, is, is something that we need to be devoting a lot of attention to. You know, we passed a good bill out of the House last year, the Pastor Protection Act. Uh, I support that bill, and 
you know, if, if someone wants to bring that bill back this year, then uh, I will certainly support it. But, uh, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm not sure that, uh, um, we, we, you know, Georgia's got so many good things going right now, and I'm not sure that we want to f model after uh, North Carolina and Indiana and some other states like that. So uh, I think we have to be very, very careful, and that's not a um, – I'm, I'm not going to devote a lot of energy to that this session because it's taken too much, frankly. There's been a lot of calls, as usual, for uh, tax incentives. We get that every year. Uh, a couple of them I can think of off the top of my head. Historic, uh, historic property tax credit, uh, financial technology is looking for help. On the other hand, you also have <coughs> people going to push for you to put back the EV uh, tax credit for electric vehicles. Can you talk about you know, what might gain traction among some of those items? I haven't really heard much about the EV tax credit uh, in the run-up to the session. Uh, um, I, I don't know uh, that there's much of a push out there for that. Um, uh, I'm going to defer to um, uh, Chairman Jay Powell, and uh, his Ways and Means Committee has been meeting on a very frequent basis and have, has done some great work over the summer and fall. Um, and um, uh, I know they have some ideas, and I think they'll be ready to talk about those within the first week or two, and we'll see what they come with. There's been some talk, though, of doing away with the sales tax holiday. Could you address that specifically? Well, we've talked about that before. <clears throat> um, I'm not sure. Um, it, it seems to be uh, uh, popular on sort of a limited basis with, with a lot of Georgians. Uh, um, I, I think that's certainly on the table, um, uh, as are other issues. So I, I'm not ready to commit one way or the other on uh, on, on specific uh, uh, tax issues. Yeah, Tom. It's an important issue, uh, obviously, for health care community is the uh, Medicaid provider fee or hospital mm -hmm. tax, however you want to characterize it. Do you see that having much difficulty passing this year, or have you heard you grumbling about it? I think it's important that we pass it, and I hope that we uh, can take that up fairly quickly in the session and get it behind us, uh, <clears throat> because frankly, um, it's a real uh, cornerstone of our uh, health care system here in Georgia, uh, and uh, it, 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 it's something that gets uh, mischaracterized, I think, often, uh, but, uh, you know, our, our goal is to... Uh, uh, is to take that up and and uh, and and move on rather quickly during the session. Can you give us your latest on um, uh, the possibility of Medicaid expansion under the Affordable Care Act? And if that is now off the table, um, is there anything that um, you hope or expect to take up as a stopgap measure, uh, given that Congress could take you know well over a year? Well, I think that <clears throat> I think Medicaid expansion came off the table the night of November 8, uh, frankly. Um, uh, what I'm hoping is that this Congress under uh, Secretary uh, of HHS Tom Price will uh, allow the states to design their own health care uh, systems, uh, because I think that's the way it ought to be through a block grant program. I think Georgians have the ability to design uh, a system that best suits Georgia. Um, you know, I think we have to, to, to begin with a recognition that uh, there are too many uninsured Georgians uh, here in the state, uh, so we do have a problem. Um, and. Uh, uh, I do anticipate that the uh, Affordable Care Act uh, will be repealed, uh, but I also think that it will be replaced. And I think, frankly, we're, we're, we're going to be in a little bit of a wait-and-see uh, posture until uh, we see what the replacement looks like. So no stopgap? Well, I don't know. I mean, uh, I think it's going to depend on the, the sort of the, the, the pace of the change in Washington. Um, and uh, you know we'll be looking at at, at some uh, at all possibilities, but uh, I, I think that again, 
um, until we get this um, sort of obstacle out of the way. I think it's premature to talk about stop gaps or. Does, does, does the climate in Washington preclude any, any debate over a certificate of need? I don't know that that's related to what's going on up there, Jim. Um, uh, I think you'll, you may hear some debate about uh, CON. I know that uh, Chairman Wendell Willard has a bill that uh, has been discussed in the uh, Governmental Affairs Committee uh, over the last month or two, and, and um, you know that's a very, uh, as you know from having been here, uh, like me, too long. Uh, um, that that's a um, uh, it's a heated issue. I mean, uh, uh, and and many uh, in the hospital community around the state. Uh, um, you know, they're, they're passionate defenders of, of, of that system. But transportation and transit, there's been a lot of talk mm -hmm. about, about um, trying to extend rail lines north to North Fulton County now again, in general or larger. <coughs> what are you seeing coming on transportation and transit? Well, one thing that we're going to do um, um, that I will um, be talking about a little bit more next week and when I meet with the Committee on Assignments later today, uh, we are going to, for the first time in seven years, create a new committee in the House. Uh, it'll be uh, a committee attached to the Appropriations Committee, uh, and it will be a committee on transportation and infrastructure. Uh, in the post-House Bill 170 world, uh, uh, you know, transportation now is, is, is an increasingly big deal, uh, as it should be. Um, and so we're going to, uh, you know, I, I had time on my hands over the last couple of months to sort of reflect on um, how much of the budget goes to transportation, and, and it's getting to be more and more. Uh, transit's an important part of that. Um, I've said repeatedly, and I say again today, that uh, transit is going to be an important part of our transportation future in Georgia. Uh, many of the, you know, the, 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 the specific rail line you mentioned, I think, is going to uh, be a decision that the local communities in conjunction with the state will uh, need to make. Uh, but uh, I think we have to recognize that, uh, that transit is, 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 is not only a part of congestion mitigation, um, but it's economic development uh, here in, here in uh, the state. And um, so the, one of the ways we're going to make that a, uh, a priority is, is to uh, create its own committee to look at, uh, at funding. What are your overall hopes leading into this new session? Well, I hope for good weather this weekend. Uh, uh, I hope that we uh, can pass a, um, a balanced budget. Um, <laughs> And I hope we can deal with a, a, a few of the issues we've talked about here today. I hope that we will uh, continue to uh, conduct ourselves in the House of Representatives with civility and with respect uh, as we have over the past seven years. I'm very, very proud of that, and I'm hoping that continues. Uh, I think that's what Georgians expect us to do um, and, uh, and working together when we can. Uh, across the aisle. I um, uh, had a very good meeting with a minority leader uh, yesterday, and, um, uh, and, and she didn't tell me what her plans were, by the way, but uh, uh, we had a good meeting, and, 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 and uh, so I hope that we can have a, a, a spirit of cooperation uh, going forward because I think that's important. Uh, I think that's what people expect. I think they're. I think they rejected. I think November's election was a rejection of the dysfunction in Washington. Frankly, that that's that's not here. Representative um, Keisha Waits has pre-filed an anti-bullying bill. I think it's House Bill 16 that puts protections in place for LGBT individuals. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you intend to support? I've not read the bill. Um, back on. <clears throat> to them back on campus carry, what is it going to take to get campus carry passed and signed by the governor? Well, we passed it last year. Uh, we passed a uh, uh, what I thought was a good bill out of the House, and 
I don't think the Senate even changed a uh, punctuation mark in it. Uh, and they passed it, uh, and um, we didn't hear any concerns during that process. And um, So I, if, if people have concerns, I hope they will um, engage early. Uh, we'll go back through the process and take it through committee and, and, and vet it, and uh, um, uh, hopefully we'll find... Uh, uh, a point that will um, um, uh, be satisfactory to everybody involved in the process here. Do you think that should be allowed in daycare or administrative buildings? Well, I, th I think that's going to be a judgment that the House is going to have to make uh, and, and the legislature. Uh, um, uh, frankly, uh, um, I don't know that not dealing with that keeps guns out of those places. Uh, you know, I, I, I believe very simply that, that bad guys are going to take guns wherever they want to take them, frankly. I'm not worried uh, about people that, uh, that are, that are law-abiding citizens. I, 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 you know, uh, where they take weapons, I think that I worry about people that shouldn't have them to begin with, where they're going to take them. Mr. Speaker, yeah. the uh, Joint Committee on Rural Broadband just finished their report. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, do you see something coming out of that joint committee study in this session? And can you elaborate on anything that uh, you've talked to anybody about, about the rural broadband? That, no, that's a good question. Um, I, first of all, let me say, I think broadband in rural Georgia is, is, is a critical part of our infrastructure. Uh, it's as critical as transportation. It's as critical as water. Um, it, it's, it, it's, it's critical to economic development in rural Georgia. Um, I just finally yesterday had a chance to, to uh, review <coughs> the, um, uh, the committee's report, uh, uh, not in, in as much detail as I plan to. Uh, I, I know that there will be some legislation to clarify, for example, what the EMCs can do. In, 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 in certain regions in terms of offering broadband and, uh, uh, and I'll be supportive of that because I think that it's, a, uh, it's something we need to move forward on. I think, you know, one of the things that I heard as I traveled around the state uh, last year um, was people are very, very proud of our job creation record here in Georgia. But when you get out in rural Georgia, they're wanting to know where their jobs are. And, and, and so uh, there's a feeling that, the, that economic development has sort of left rural Georgia behind in too many cases. We have to fix that. And whatever it takes to, to do that, we, we're going to have to do. Every session you see several bills introduced addressing the issue of immigration in various ways. Do you see a need to address that? I don't know. I, I don't want to make a judgment until I've read what bills are introduced, Tom. I think that would be unfair. Um, uh, I know the president-elect has said he's going to build a wall, so uh, let's wait and see if the wall gets built. And uh, <clears throat> I, I think we've all been in agreement, and, and I say that somewhat facetiously, uh, but I think we've all been in agreement that, that the, the real solution to the immigration issue has to be done on the federal level. Uh, and, uh, you know, we, we tackled immigration reform here in Georgia back in, uh, I think it was 2011 or 2012. Um, and so we've led the way in terms of state solutions. Um, so, uh, but I, I think that um, here again, uh, uh, I, I think we're going to that that's going to have to be fixed uh, by the federal government. Can you, see, can you talk a little bit about um, military affairs? Um, I think there's talk of, of continuing the work of the summer yeah. stadium somewhere. What's what's going to be the form of that, and what do you hope to get out of that? That's a great question. Uh, one of the one of the things I was most pleased about last session was creating the uh, military affairs study committee, uh, and I, I can't imagine a group that could have worked any harder than that group did, went all over the state to all of our communities where military bases are located, 
looking for uh, things that we as a state can do to prepare for the next uh, 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 BRAC uh, process, which I think we're a couple of years away from. And because that's so important, then we're extending uh, that uh, group, and, uh, and not as a permanent standing committee of the House, but as a working group over the next two years at least to, uh, to, to, to continue looking at, uh, at, at whatever we as a state government can do to best prepare Georgia uh, for uh, defending against uh, base closures and downsizing and, and things of that sort because, uh, you know, our military installations are, are critical. Uh, to many, many communities here in the state, and critical to the entire state. The president-elect is, talked about, is not talking about you know, shrinking the military, but one thing he has put his bullseye on are you know, large projects like you know, the Central Wing, the mm -hmm. and it, I, I hope he changes his mind on that. You have concerns about that. I do. Um, and uh, obviously that's a military decision. Uh, but I, I hope that he will um, um, uh, kind of uh, hit the pause button and, and, and look at that issue a little further. Let's go for two more. Do you have a JQC pick yet? Excuse me? Uh, pick for the new I don't. I'm, 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 I'm more focused right now on who's going to be the chair of the Transportation Committee in the House and who's going to chair the Ethics Committee and who's going to chair uh, all those openings that we have. We got. Uh, uh, we have a lot of work there to do, and, and once we get that done, I'll, I'll, I'll appoint uh, uh, both a, uh, uh, an attorney and a citizen, uh, I, and I, uh, uh, I will be looking for people who, who are committed to uh, uh, the work of that commission, uh, uh, because I, I think it, 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 it's, it's a very, very important entity. Um, and um, uh, I'm, I was very pleased with the result of the constitutional amendment. Uh, I thought it was important that uh, there be some accountability uh, there and that we take the uh, influence of a special interest group out of uh, uh, that role. Mr. Speaker, there are four openly gay members of the Georgia House this year. How do you think that will change the conversation, especially if something like the, the RIFRA gets reintroduced, even though it's not something on your priority list? Those members will be treated exactly like every other member of the House, and their opinions will be given no less or no more weight or credit um, because I respect the constituencies that elected them, um, and um, uh, they, as well as all the members, are my friends, and so uh, uh, there's not going to be any, any, any difference made. Mr. Speaker, um, yeah. Well, it does concern me. I think that it uh, should concern every Georgian. Uh, um, um, uh, frankly, uh, I, I want to know a little bit more about uh, uh, why there was no uh, professional discipline handed out. Um, I'm sorry, they were disciplined. They um, were perhaps put on probation and then uh, re Okay. Uh, well, I might want to know why they weren't criminally prosecuted. Uh, um, I, I think I'd want to know a little bit more about sort of an overview of those cases before I uh, offered up any uh, uh, solutions from a legislative standpoint. Do you expect, do you expect any movement, because uh, we've done stories on distracted driving, do you see any movement on hands-free? Hands -free? I, I, I really don't. Um, um, I mean, uh, again, I, I, haven't, I haven't read any bills that have been pre-filed and, and I don't know what will be coming down uh, the pike. Uh, um, you know, at the end of the day, uh, th th there's, there's a certain element of sort of self-discipline that we have to expect out of people. Uh, and um, uh, we can only police conduct so far, I think. And 
Um, so, but we'll see what gets introduced. Thank you. Thanks, Speaker. Thanks, Speaker.